Hey guys, welcome to episode four of From Beginner to iPad Pro. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you five iPad tips that can help boost your productivity. These are simple features that make everyday tasks quicker and easier, whether you're writing notes, keeping organized or managing files. Let's jump straight into the first tip. Okay, so this next tip we're going to look at is within Apple Reminders and it's to create shopping lists. So I use this one for doing my grocery shopping every week, but you can also create other lists like a general shopping list or a really good one would be a Christmas shopping list. So I'll first show you how to make a grocery shopping list. So if you open up your Apple Reminders and then we come down here to add list, and then we want an iCloud list, so it goes on all of our Apple devices. And then in here, there's a few different type of lists you can do. So if you come here to list type, we are on a standard list, and this is just going to list all of your items in one big list. But if we come to standard and we go shopping, this is going to group all of our shopping items into different categories. So we wanna give this list a name, let's call it groceries. And then I wanna make it green. And then we can change this icon up the top to maybe a carrot or shopping basket or a knife and fork. Let's go the knife and fork. And then we're gonna just click done up the top here. Okay, so now you can see we have our grocery list over here. And then to add items, we just wanna go new item down the bottom here. And then we can add something in, like let's say we need to add bread to our shopping list. And you can see here, it's put it into a category. Uh, we need milk and we need chicken. So you can see here, it's grouped all of our items into categories, which can make it really helpful when you're actually in the shop to look at the categories for the sections that you're shopping around in. What I like to do is throughout the week, I will just add items when I run out of something into this list. So then whenever I go out, I grab my iPhone and I open my reminders app and I have my groceries list here. And then I can go into the shop and tick off the items that I get. So we tick off bread and that'll disappear off the list. If you ticked off something by accident, you can actually come up to these three little dots and go show completed, and it will just mark it with a dot. So you can also look at it like that, or if you wanna come back and untick it, you can. So this is really helpful just to make sure you always have your list on hand and you didn't leave your piece of paper at home on the bench and you can add to it, whether you're sitting on the couch with your iPad or out and about with your iPhone, you will have your list wherever you go. And you can also create other lists like a general shopping list, so if you needed to go pick up a new hat, some new shoes, you can just add that to the shopping list and you can also set reminders to it. So if we were just to create another general shopping list, we could just go add and then we'll go iCloud and we could just call this one shopping and we'll get an icon, do a shopping cart and get pink. And if we just keep this one as a standard list, it's not going to group all of our items into categories. So we'll go done. Now we could make a list just for those general things that you want to pick up. So let's just say, get a new, oops, a new hat. And we can also now set a reminder to alert us tomorrow. So if we click on the item we want and come up here to this little calendar, we can have it reminders today, tomorrow, this week, next week, or we can go custom. And then we can say, remind me tomorrow at 9 a.m. apply. And so now your iPad and your iPhone will get a notification to remind you to go get that item. And then you can tick it off your list once you've got it. This next tip is for anyone who has a Apple Pencil. So if you have an Apple Pencil, there's something you can use called Scribble. So first of all, you wanna make sure Scribble is turned on. And to do this, we wanna go into our settings. We wanna to go to Apple Pencil on the side here. 
And then under Apple Pencil, we want to come down and turn on Scribble. So if we come here to try Scribble, it's going to give us a little demo of what Scribble can do. So I'll show you that first. So pretty much what Scribble is, is you can use your Apple Pencil to write in any text field. So this can be really handy if you just like to navigate your iPad with your pencil. Instead of bringing up your keyboard to type stuff, you can just hand write it in with your pencil. So to test it out, you can see here we have a text box and you can just write anything and it will turn it into proper text. So you can see how it just turns that into text. To delete, you just need to scribble through the word. So if I just scribble over the word I want to delete, it's going to get rid of it. To select, we can just circle the word we want to select. So you just put a circle around it and it's going to select it and then bring you up things like cut, copy and paste. If we come across to insert, so for insert, if you're writing something and you want to insert a word in there, you just need to press and hold and then you can write the word that you want to put in there. And then you also have join, which is just a vertical line between two words and it will bring it together. And then if you want to separate the word, you do a line again. So that's a quick demo on how it works, but I'll show you some real life use cases of how you would use it. So if we go out of settings, let's say you're in Safari and you want to search for a website, you can write the website name in here. google.com and then it's going to bring it up like that for you. If you make a mistake, you can just scribble it out. Also, if you're using Spotlight and you can just write what you're looking for up here. And there you go. It's searching all the apps. So you can use this in pretty much any app that has a search field. So this can just be really handy for anyone who enjoys using their pencil. You don't need to swap between a keyboard and the pencil. You can just hand write into the field. So just make sure you have Scribble turned on in the settings and then you'll be all good to go. Since we've been looking at writing with the Apple Pencil, it's a perfect time to talk about today's video sponsor, Paperlike. If you haven't come across Paperlike before, it's a screen protected design for iPad users who like to write or draw with the Apple Pencil. The whole idea is that it makes your iPad feel like you're writing on premium paper. On the glossy iPad screen, my pencil would often slip around, but with Paperlike, there's just enough resistance to give you more control. That's because of their nano dot technology, which is tiny microbeads built into the protector. They create the feel of real paper while still keeping your iPad screen sharp and vibrant. It definitely helps my handwriting look neater. And if you're into drawing or sketching, you'll notice a difference too. I even use my iPad for coloring in when I want to relax. And with Paperlike, it's just a nicer experience overall. It also helps protect your iPad from scratches and smudges and it's gentle on the Apple Pencil tip so it lasts longer. Plus it comes with an easy install kit and a video guide to make applying it simple. I'll leave a link in the description below if you would like to check it out and thanks to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. So this next tip is really great for those times when you have a quick thought and you just wanna quickly get it written down. So all you need to do is when your iPad is locked, grab your Apple Pencil, tap on the screen and it's going to instantly open up a Apple Quick Note. And then once you're in here, you can quickly write down whatever you're thinking about. So write your note and then you can move on with your day and your note will be in there. So later on, when you would like to find your note, you just want to come across to your Apple Notes app, click on that. And then under iCloud, you should have your latest notes right here at the top. And if you click on that, you can see the note that you just did. If you find when you're tapping on your screen with your Apple Pencil, it's not opening your Apple Notes, you just need to unlock your iPad and go into your settings. And if you scroll down the side here to apps, and then find notes, open up notes, and then right down the bottom, you will see access notes from lock screen. And you just need to make sure this is turned on. For a security thing, people won't be able to access your notes by clicking on here. So if you come to all notes, they're going to need your face ID or passcode to actually get into the rest of your notes. So it's only gonna open up a blank quick note and then you can put whatever you want in that, lock it, 
go on with your day. Then later on, you can unlock your iPad, go into the Notes app and find the quick note. Okay, so this next tip is one for the Files app. So if I open up my Files app and you have a look under Locations on the side here, you can see I have my Google Drive connected. So you can actually connect third-party services like Google Drive, Dropbox, or OneDrive to your Files app so you can look at the files stored in those applications. So if I click on my OneDrive, I have all of my files that are stored on my OneDrive account. Now to do this, all you need to do is make sure the service that you use, so Google Drive or let's say Dropbox, you need to make sure the app is installed on your iPad. So if I come across here and I go Drive, you can see I have the Google Drive app on my iPad. So if you don't have that already on there, you just need to go over to the App Store and install your Dropbox or your OneDrive or your Google Drive. And then once you've installed it and logged into the app, you need to come back across to the Files app. Then you need to come up and press the three dots up the top here. And then you need to click Edit Sidebar. And then you will have a toggle to turn on and off those apps. So if you just installed your Dropbox app to your iPad, you will see it in here and then you'll just toggle it on so you can see it in this list and then you would go done. So if I go up to the three dots, edit, I can turn this one off and done and it disappears. And then we can go edit and turn it back on. So make sure your storage app has been installed on your iPad and it's logged in and then you will be able to show it on the sidebar here and then access all of your files within that storage service. And you have all the same options just like you would for anything else installed on your iPad or on your iCloud drive. So this last tip is something I use all the time and it is just super helpful if you need to write stuff. So obviously there's a few ways you can write things on your iPad. You can use your Apple Pencil and handwrite it. You can use the keyboard on the screen or you can even connect a keyboard case to your iPad and use it more like a little laptop. But my favorite way to write things is using dictation. So you can use dictation anywhere that the keyboard pops up. So I'll show you in Apple Notes. So you can see my keyboard has popped up here and you can see this little icon down here of a microphone. All you need to do is press that and start talking and it will dictate what you're saying. So I've pressed the button and now it's dictating everything I say and typing it out for me. And it's way faster than if I was to type it on the keyboard. Full stop. And then you press it again to turn the dictation off so it stops writing out what you're saying. But yeah, dictation has come a really long way and I find it's pretty accurate to what I'm saying. That was so much faster than if I was to type that out. You can use the dictation button on anything that the keyboard pops up in. So again, you could use it to type in a website name. So you would click on the website URL google.com. So yeah, I think dictation is a really great tool to use to be more productive because it's going to save you so much time instead of sitting there typing out things. You can use it in emails, notes, replying to comments, searching for websites. There's heaps of ways you can use it. So yeah, make sure you give it a go. And that's it for this month's iPad tips video. If you want to check out Paperlike, I've left a link in the description below. And I'd love to know which was your favorite tip or which one you're most excited to try first. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.